Bible up, if you will, tonight to the book of Exodus, chapter number 14. Exodus, chapter number 14. And I'll talk tonight about going forward for God, moving forward. We're at a place to where, of course, we're trying to be able to seek God and uh, trying to be able to figure out what the Lord's will is. And sometimes that's hard because God puts us in a place to where we really don't know what to do. And if we do something, uh, again, Brother Shannon and I was talking about this uh, if you do the wrong thing, you got to give an account to God. So you think, Lord, I want to please you. The last thing I want to do is mess up. And uh, I've learned that that is our day-to-day -day battle if you're trying to please the Lord. Exodus chapter number 14, I'm going to start reading in verse number 1 for the sake of time. And would you notice a few things tonight. The Bible says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. They turn and encamp before Pahaharoth. Verse number 3, the Bible says, And for Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all the, his hosts. And the Egyptians, notice this now, may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Go down a few verses, if you will. I want you to notice, pick up in verse number 9. The Bible says this, actually verse number 8. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. So in this process, we see that God is literally speaking to them. And as God speaks to them, he tells them, I want you to be able to go to a place. And that place is known as Pahaharoth, I believe is how you would say that. In the process, he says, I've got, I've got something I need to do. I say it often, but remember, there's no such thing as an accident with God. God has a plan for everything that he's doing. So he tells them that I'm going to do this. And in verse 4, he says, because I want the Egyptians. Egyptians to know that I am the Lord. So God is working, but watch this now. Not only is he working in the children of Israel, but he's also showing those in the world. How many of you know sometimes when God does something in our life, it's not just for us, it's for people that are watching us and they're looking at us. And just like we're talking about with this election, watch this now, they're watching Christians, they're looking at Christians, how we're going to respond to this. It matters, every little thing that we do. So the Bible says that he sends them out. And he comes to verse number 8 and he hardens the hand and uh, heart of, of Pharaoh. But then the Bible says that the children of Israel came out with a high hand. If I could say it this way, they are victorious in verse number 8. Verse number 9, the Bible comes and says this, but the Egyptians pursued after them. Sounds just like a Sunday morning service. Come in, hallelujah, amen, God's good all the time. And on Monday, the devil comes to fight. Never fails that way. The Bible says after that, it says, And the chariots of Pharaoh, the horsemen and the army, overtook them, encamping by the sea. Watch this now. Beside, where's that at? Bahahara. I know it might not seem a lot like you, but if you think about this for a minute, it's, it's kind of unusual that God told the children of Israel to go to Bahahara, and then he also told them to go to Bahahara. If you was to look at this from a bird's eye view, it's almost like he told them to go to a place and he also told the enemy to go to a place. And I know this is not the Lord's way, but if I can say it this way, if you did not know any better and you were not spiritually minded, you would think that the Lord was setting you up for failure. Now, nobody in here tonight is going to be like, well, that's what God does. But when you're in the midst of the battle and you're facing some things, there, there's something inside of you. You're like, Lord, I don't understand. I know that you're in control. We say things like this. If God is love and God is righteous, then why would God let something happen like this? When you get sore and you get hurt and you get afflicted, people even of faith sometimes can have a very weak faith and, and they can say things that they thought they would never say before. Why? Because it can get very difficult and get very hard. But that's not the case because we've seen God bring us to places. And in that process, what he does is he bursts something in us and he shows us something and he reveals something to us that we've never seen before. So the Bible says in verse number 10, notice if you will, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were, notice these words, sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. If you would have noticed in verse number 8, there's a great contrast. Oh, in verse number 8, they come out with a high hand. Verse number 10, the Bible says they are sore afraid. Sometimes these things happen. 
I, I, I would dare say, and I'm not trying to be political tonight, but it's definitely relevant in the day that we're living in. This could be the very season that we're living in right now. We might come out thinking that we are victorious and everything's okay, and here we are, everything's going to be wonderful, and then you're going to wake up next Wednesday and everything's going to be completely different. You're going to say, God, what's happening? And then you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna test yourself, or you're going to be tested. Is my faith going to be in God, or, or what's going to happen? It's going to be a hard situation. But you have to make up your mind, no matter what the Lord permits, that God is still always in control. That God knows exactly what He's doing, that He is working for eternity, and He's not working for time. So hear me well, even though I would not like nor prefer some things in my life, in my family, in this church, and in this country, there are some things I would not choose. If, it, if it's what God needs to use to get us closer to the rapture and the Lord Jesus coming back, then I say, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah, like the Phillips family would always sing, I'm waiting on my ride, amen, and that is the case. But sometimes we just don't understand. Why? Because we go from having a high hand to being sore afraid. You know, I've learned when the Lord brings us to this place, it's because God's teaching. Verse number 13, very familiar verse. Let's read it together. The Bible says this, And Moses, what's the response? Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Oh, we need to remind ourselves that all the time. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show you today. Oh, it's amazing. Not tomorrow. Today. And that means in the midst of my chaos, in the midst of my surprise, when something happens today. What does that tell me, Brother Jason? No matter what I wake up to, I always have a present help in the time of need. I always have a God that is right there with me. He said, today, I'm going to show you something today. The Bible says in verse number 14, The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speaking to the children of Israel, that they, here's the words we long for, that they go forward. I want to tell you that this is God's way. God has a desire, and I believe this with all my heart, because it's what the Bible says over and over and over. It's not prosperity preaching that God wants to bless His children. Blessed are they, Psalm chapter number 1. Now, all the way to the end of the Bible, blessed are those that hear. Listen, all throughout the scriptures, blessed, blessed, blessed. The Lord wants to bless his children. But as much as he wants to bless his children, there are ways. And you cannot get it our way. It comes God's way. We get through these things and we realize that God can do things that we never thought that we could ever imagine. But as sure as we want the blessing in our life, there are trials and there are hardships that we will face and there are things that we will go through. And I just want to say, in a week, two weeks from now, hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, God's good. I got this vision of how things can turn around and I just thank God that it can be that way. But if it does not turn out the way we said we thought it should be, God is still good. God is still faithful. God knows exactly what He's doing. He's still answering prayer in the midnight hour. He's still a present help in the time of need. God is still always there. But we know that God is teaching something in the midst of this. Here's why. Because when we come to these moments at the end of the day, it's about God conquering us. It's not about Him conquering our Pharaoh. You know what I've learned over the last 20 years of my life being a Christian? There's a lot of people born again that they still, they still love God and they're living for Jesus, but we struggle with this flesh. And I don't care how long you've been saved. It could be old flesh, it could be young flesh, but it's still flesh. So sometimes he unsettles us. Sometimes he shakes us up. Sometimes he, he stops us. He pauses us. He, he puts us in a place because it's not that he's worried. <laughs> I just say this. He don't care who's over China. He don't care what kind of bombs are being dropped. It don't make no difference who's sitting in the White House or who's not in the White House. God ain't intimidated. God ain't scared. God's still God. So he's not worried about none of that. But I'll tell you what he is concerned about. Just like you and I is concerned about our children, he's concerned about us. And what he's concerned about is him getting an honor, getting a glory. So whatever it takes for him to be able to do that, listen, that's exactly what's going to be. Why? Because just as the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 5, he says, to him be the glory and dominion forever. It's not about my glory. It's not your glory. No, it's about his glory. That's what it's all about is God getting the glory. So in those moments of being still and speeding up and slowing down that roller coaster back and forth and back and forth, some people sit up all night on next Tuesday night. 
Back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And I'm saying that because here, listen to me, and I, I listen, I'm being transparent with you tonight. How many times do we think, man, our faith is in that boat when the truth is our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ? I am with you. I long, I long, I long for things to turn around. Listen, I long for my interest rate to drop. Somebody should have took a lap. I mean, I got a lot. I mean, listen, I, 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 I long for them to be able to make a stand against aborted babies. I, 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 I long for things to be able to happen to where they still protect the church and be able to understand the word of God is still needed and putting God back into the schools and not being scared to death to be able to pray and instead of being able to talk about this gender and that gender and whether or not they're this kind of animal or that animal, they understand that man is man and woman is woman and they stand on that. I mean, I, I believe in that. I want that. But at the end of the day, it may not turn out that way, but God will still be God. And I just want to tell you today on the front end of it, let's make up our minds that no matter what happens or what God allows or permits, listen, we are still going to stay true to the Word of God and lift up Jesus Christ and preach Jesus to this world, a lost and dying world without Christ. They're going to go to hell, but God has given us the greatest privilege we could ever know about sharing the glorious gospel with everybody that we come encounter with. Oh, what a privilege, what an opportunity, what a challenge, what a command, what a call that God has given us to be able to do it in such a dark day. And I believe these days are the greatest days to live in. Why? Because these are the last days. These are the last days. These are the days anything can happen. I know people have been preaching that for years and years and years. But my question is, why aren't we living that way? Why aren't we living that way? So when you come to this place, you say, stand still. Oh, what happens? I'm going to tell you what happens in that moment. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 10. The Bible says this. It says, Then the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Can I tell you something? In the moment of this pause where we are, can I tell you the greatest thing we can do is just keep praying? The Bible says when they came to that moment, they, they cried out to the Lord. That's what we need to do tonight. We need to make up our mind that we're just going to keep praying. No matter what happens, the pause, the cease, the, the activity that begins to slow down, we're going to make up our mind that we're going to keep praying God. It should be the first thing we do, but sometimes it's the last thing we do. And how many times we've read in the Word of God, at what time I'm, I'm afraid, you call upon the Lord. You seek God. You, you look to Him. Why? He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's got everything taken care of. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe God wants to keep us on our knees. Keep us on our knees. And that's what we need. That's what we need. Oh, but not only that. Notice this. I like. He says down in verse number 13. He says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. Notice this now. And see. You see. The children of Israel. You see. Uh, in other words, let, let me break this down. We get so caught up in quoting this all the time. The Lord is saying to the children of Israel, I want to show you something. I, I, I want to show you something that you don't see. I, I want to show you something that you need to see. In other words, you got, your, you got your view all out of whack. Can I say it that way? You're focused on Pharaoh. You're focused on the Egyptians. You're focused on all this. Your priorities is overcoming Pharaoh. Your priorities is doing this and that and, and going on and moving beyond. But God says, I got something I want to show you. You want to know why? Because God has a purpose for these seasons in our life. And sometimes that purpose is because he's trying to rearrange our priorities. Somebody give me an amen right there. He's trying to help us see you need to quit focusing on what you're focusing on. You need to quit dwelling on what you're dwelling on. And, and turn your eyes into the Lord. And remember, in every great depression, every battle, every war, every hard time, every, every situation we ever had, God is, has always been God. And he ain't never changed. And it's not going to change tonight. But not only is he showing the children this. Notice verse number four, remember, remember, God, why do you have us sitting here in a pause? Verse number four, he says that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Can I ask you a question? How can we quote, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some men count slackness, but is lost long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish. How can we quote that and not realize that if it takes something to see the lost get saved because he's not willing that any should perish, how can we not rejoice and be content? I say this carefully because, again, we, we have a battle with pride, desire, want, and trusting the Lord sometimes. But for those that I love, 
Oh, whatever it would take for them to get saved, Brother Jonathan, as hard as it would be, I'd want it to happen. I never forget Miss Carrie Myers. I talk about her often whenever things like that happen. One of the greatest things that ever happened. I remember Miss Kathy. I, those, those early days when you walk with the Lord, Brother Shannon, God reminds you of those things. He, he teaches you some things. And I was able to be able to witness a lot of things. But also during that time, that season of my life, Miss Carrie Myers, a lady came down with cancer. She had, had, had literally stood up and she said, that if, if God needed to take my life or my family to get saved, I'll never forget what long after that she ended up having cancer. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. But then you're reminded God works for eternity and not for time. God is allowed to be able to share the gospel with her husband who respectfully was a very hard man. Very difficult man. Son was a man of bitterness and, and really lack of trust in church. But through that process, God was able to soften their heart for them to be able to come to know Christ. Oh, so listen, now for eternity, there's not a carry. Now there's a carry, a husband, and a son. So sometimes the Lord is doing something, but it's not all about us. It's about everybody else that's around us. But not only that, and then you notice too, he says that in verse number 14. Notice this, he says, the Lord shall fight for you. Oh, God, I, I want to know what you're doing. I, he says, I'm just trying to take care of it for you. Hey, I, you know what? We, we, we say, God, I don't know why you won't fix this because you won't let go of it. I, I, I don't know why you won't change it because you, you, won't, you won't change it. You're holding on so tight that you, you just won't let go. Can I say this? Every time I do anything, Brother Jonathan, I make a mess of it. Oh, but when I put it in my Lord's hands, casting. I'll never forget Brother Mark Wyatt one time. He says to cast something means you have to let it go. There's been a lot of times, uh, Brother Mitchell, I hold on to it. Like a yo-yo. Throw it out there and it yo-yos right back. I don't let go of it. But God says, if you just give it to me, God said, I'll show you something you've never seen before. How many marriages? How many diagnoses? How many problems? How many financial problems? How many relationships? How many lost people? We've almost, we've almost been so aggressive, we pushed them away. But when we let go and we give it to God, we pray more. God does the greatest work. I talk a lot about this, obviously, now, and you're probably tired of it, and it's okay, but it's just these past couple of days. The Lord obviously has been doing a lot of work in my life with my son. I sat on my wife today. She came back. She was serving up there in the western part of the state. and She came back. We were talking a little bit and spending some time about what she'd seen. And I told her, I said, the Lord told me. And it's hard for me. Y'all pray for me. Y'all done been through this. So Y'all don't judge me. But Brother Shannon, the Lord told me I got to start praying about some stuff and I got to quit trying to control it with him. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. I still want to be able to tell him the line's right here and the line's right here. This is a dotted line. You cannot pass here or you can pass here. You can speed up a little bit. It's 45 miles per hour. I'm talking about the travel of life as life as it is. It's not controlling him, but it's trying to manage him to where I can micromanage his mistakes. Can I just tell you this? God sometimes has taught me my greatest lessons and let me see me for who I really was. And God forbid that I be the father because I'm trying to handle it. I'm trying to fight it. That I am aborting what God is trying to birth in my son's life. And what I'm trying to tell you tonight is this. Sometimes we got to learn to let go and watch the Lord fight for us. Just watch him fight for us. Does that mean that we're a quitter? That's what the devil tells me. You're going to quit on your son? I'm not quitting on him. I'm not quitting on him. Before I came to church today, I was sitting in my office at the house and I was going through a book and I was thinking to myself, you know what? <laughs> Some of you daddies might understand this. I said, you know, I might not be able to get up and tell him everything, but you know what I'll do? I'll get on my knees and I'll pray and I'll pray for an hour and say everything I want him to hear. Can I get an amen? I mean, I'm being silly, but listen, the Holy Ghost says you can't do that. <laughs> God, I pray that he won't do this, and he won't do this, and he won't do this. I can't do that. But you know why I say that tonight? is because only in the presence of the Lord do I accept. Here's why. Because God says, 
I will fight for you. The Lord will take care of my son better than I would. The Lord will take care of this country better than we will. The Lord will take care of our family and this church better than we do. God, God knows how to take care of everything. So how do we go forward, Brother Jason? I want you to notice, if you will, in the text, and I'll be done. Brother Jerry Wayne, if you don't mind, you come. But keep your Bible open. There's a lot that's here. The Bible says, notice, if you will, go down to verse number 22. And the children of Israel went. That, that means they, they did what they were told to do. That means they, they did the word that nobody wants to talk about. They obeyed what God said. You say, I, I, I want to move on. I want to be able to make it. I, I want to be able to do it. You know, going back to the political state that we're in. Who's to say, and I'm not God, but who's to say that we've switched parties because we wasn't, we were not obedient and God let us have a taste of something else. And maybe God lets it come back to what's closer to the word of God. Do you understand? Maybe God held back. And I, I, you say, that I don't think that's possible. God can do anything he wants to do. Because when we woke up, we're like, how in the world can they get away with that? Why are you giving the devil credit? God was in control. I mean, have you, have, you, have you ever walked through an ocean and been water on this side and water on this side? Don't tell me God can't do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Literally. But what we're going to have to do is make up our mind that we're, we're just going to obey whatever God tells us to do. We're literally going to take one step in front of the other and just trust the Lord all the way. And say, God, it don't matter what it is. I, my satisfaction and my hope and my joy and my contentment and my faith is not contingent on an outcome. Because you're God and it's your character. That's what matters. That's what matters. And then it's those, if you will. The Bible says this, you're going down. The Bible says in verse number, uh, let's look at verse number 20. Let's go to verse number 26, if I can. Actually, I take it back. Let's go backwards a little bit. The Bible says uh, in verse number 20, uh, 20, the Bible says, and it came between, no, verse number 19, we'll start there. And the angel of the Lord, watch this now, and the angel of the Lord went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So, so when you come to this, you're thinking, Lord, how are you going to do this? Hear me well. Here it is. Key word. You ready? Not only are we just going to have to do what God tells us to do, but we're going to have to trust the Lord. Did you see what he did? The, he went before and he went behind. We're just going to have to say, God, it's not by my might. It's not by my strength. It's not by my wisdom. It's not by my knowledge. Lord, you're going to take care of it. You're going to protect me. You're going to guide me. You're going to lead me. And Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to depend on you 100%. Have we made our mind up to do that? And then the last thing, I want you to notice this, if you will. The Bible says that when they came, they continued to be able to walk. And the Bible says, let's go on down. The Bible says in verse number 20, I think it's in verse number 27. The Bible says, And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned strength. No, I'm sorry. Let's go back a few verses. When the Bible says that they walked. I'm trying to find it in my text. Forgive me. They walked through is what they did. I can't see it here. Nonetheless, the Bible says that when it came, that they, they literally had walked across is what they did. And, and here, here's the key to what I'm trying to drive to you. That walked, if I could find it, and please forgive me, it's in there. I just, I ain't got it written on my note. But that walked is this, walked W-A-L-K-E-D. So you just read through that, you'll see. Here's the point. You have to keep doing what God told you to do. There it is. Thank you, brother. Verse number 29. Thank God for a Holy Ghost sound man. Amen. Look at this. Watch this now. Watch this now. This is the key. But the children of Israel walked upon dry ground in the midst of the sea. They didn't just take one step. They took another step. They didn't just pray one day. They prayed the next day. 
They didn't just obey when they came to church. They obeyed when they left the church. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? If we're going to be able to get through this season of what God's going to do, we just got to keep doing what God's told us to do and trust Him all the way. There's some of you that have seen not only this country, but your family go through a lot of things. But there's one thing that's a common denominator, and it's this, that God has always been faithful, and He's always been true. There's stories that you have. Some are louder, longer, and harder to even talk about. But there's one thing that settles with peace all throughout the, the lifetime, and that's that God was faithful. And God protected you. So trust the Lord. You believe God can say amen. Let's stand to our feet, heads bowed, eyes closed.